Hey everybody, it's Rajesh here. And Tane here. Welcome to our podcast, Baskets of Knowledge, Chats with a Difference. In our podcast, we invite guests from around the country and around the world to talk about how they got to where they are at the moment. It's about a journey, it's about an experience, it's about their life. Good luck everybody, welcome to another episode of Baskets of Knowledge. Hopefully you're all doing fine, happy and healthy wherever you're in the country and the world. Um, Tane, good to see you again. What have you put into your Baskets of Knowledge since we last spoke? Yeah, I think something I've recognised over the last couple of days, uh, particularly, I guess, running a few trainings, but also, I guess, standing off and watching how the other coaches, I guess, take, because I'm more in a supervision role. Um, I think something I've really taken away from that is that you know, sometimes I think we always want to be the change makers and we want to be the people to make everything happen. And, you know, particularly in the girls and female space, I'm trying to grow that space to a place where, you know, we have good numbers, we have good talent, we have good skills and continue to improve the skills. But it's cool to see, I guess, how other coaches are doing it, what they're doing in that space. And also, you know, you don't have to be the forefront of everything and so I think for me it's just reflecting on you know as we ramp up to our next representative levels um a just to see how cool it is uh, what's happening in the grassroots level but also I guess how I can work alongside them to actually go I don't have to be the one who has to do everything yes I you know I have a passion for it and I want to continue to drive it but how can I work alongside some of those coaches so that yeah we, we, we share the load ultimately Yeah, it's crazy to to have that mind shift and, you know, when you want to get into any project, you want to be the one that's changing things, you want to be the, the one or the person, but sometimes you can't, do, in fact, most things in life you can't do by yourself, you need to step in, go actually, change can happen when you work with a lot of other people to make those changes happen, um, and sometimes it's, you've got to park your ego on the side and go, hey, that's okay, that's okay if I'm not, I'm not the change maker, um, but I'm part of the change making team, which is a little, little bit different. Um, my learning since we last spoke, um, and I wrote about this on LinkedIn yesterday, was um, I had dinner with a friend of mine, and we were speaking about the void, the void, and thinking about, you know, in nature, nature doesn't allow void. So every time there's a space, something's going to fill it in. You know, if you think about if a tree, if you're in the forest and a tree gets cut down straight away, nature's going to put something in there. And um, if you think about our lives, when there's a void, how do you fill that void, you know, and sometimes you fill that void with... Um, with bad things, sometimes we put it with good things, but you've got to be intentional about the way you do it. And if you're not intentional, more often than not, it's going to be bad things that go into that void there. You know, that could be a change of a job. It could be when you finish your degree, you know, for example, Tony, when you finish your degree, there was a, a bit of a void there. How do you fill that void there? You know, so easy for you to just do nothing, but, you know, you filled it up with intentional work. Um, yeah, so it's just pretty, it is a really interesting thing. And I, when I think a bit of research about it before I did my post, yeah, nature doesn't allow a void. There's no such thing as a void in nature. And the only void that exists is a black hole. And in the black hole, everything just disappears, essentially. So, you know, it's and that's, you know, we have no idea what happens in black hole. So um, that's my thought process. That's my thinking over the last few days. And I think why I brought it up today is because I think our guest today is has a great, has a, will have a great story about that void and how the void actually wasn't impacting them in their life. So um, hopefully, I could be just making this up. I don't know. You know, I'm speaking for them. Talking about our guests, um, for our regular listeners, you know that we scour the country and the world to bring people on that we think are amazing. We know everyone's amazing. Everyone's got a story to tell. We'd love to have more people on the podcast, but like Tana and myself always say, we we do this for, for a passion. We don't get paid for this here. We'd love to, but hey, that's all cool. Um, it's about a passion. It's about sharing a story with you about people that do some pretty cool things and also just living amazing lives. And today I'm really, really proud and really privileged um, for us to invite um our guests on and um, I've known this young person for the last few years and they've had they've got a pretty cool story to share and it's really beautiful that they've shared the story with me off the podcast but also I think when we do the podcast we'll get to know more about the story um, so I'd love to welcome and thank Alex for jumping into our podcast welcome Alex to the basket knowledge no thank you very much for having me I'm happy to be here Beautiful, Alex. For our listeners who know nothing about you, um, tell us a bit about who you are and what you're doing at this moment in life as we have this conversation. Yeah, so a brief bit about me. Um, I am. Well, I was born in Christchurch. Um, I'm 23 years old, um, and I am currently in my last year of a exercise and sports science degree at the University of Otago. 
Beautiful. And that's where you are at the moment. But let's talk about where you started. If I asked you this question a few years ago, I believe that your goal was to become a pilot. That was that was the vision, right? And um, yeah, so was, yeah, let's talk about that. Bit. Slight change of slight change of course. Um, so I guess if we go back to year twelve, year thirteen of high school, so it was year, what 2017, 2018. Um, yeah, my goal was to be a pilot. Um, I guess. I mean, I, yeah, I wanted to be a pilot. I saw, a, I had a mate of mine who he was kind of going down the same path, and I thought that'd be that'd be kind of cool. Um, as my parents would back me up, they were somewhat skeptical. They just didn't really think it was the right thing for me. They thought I was destined for something different, um, but they they gave their full support. But um, maybe maybe fortunately, the um, the COVID nineteen lockdown came came around, and that kind of forced me to have a bit of a change of perspective. Um, it did take a wee while. Um, I, yeah, you, you were saying there's a bit of a void after you finish your degree. Um, I kind of had the same thing finishing high school. I finished high school and didn't really know what I wanted to do. All of my um, all my mates kind of they went off to uni. They they had their goals. They had their plans. And I was I was a bit different. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I I worked the I, I was at Pack and Save as well. So I spent a fair bit of time working at Pack and Save. I was full-time there for a couple of years and then I jumped into some irrigation contracting as well. I tried my hand at that before I eventually came to uni. Um, but yeah, I guess the realisation came in the 2020 lockdown um, when I did get into running. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll probably get into that in a moment. But yeah, long story short, that kind of allowed me to discover what I really wanted to do and that was have a career in the in the sports industry. So hence why I've I've pursued my exercise and sports science degree and I'll I'll go from there. But that's kind of how I got to where I am currently. Yeah, and I, and I love that because it's, it's current and as you know, everything in life changes. And you know, I love how you brought in the fact there was a void because a lot of people think the void happens when you finish a degree or at certain points, but it starts really early on. You know, it starts when you finish up at school and yeah. everyone has the expectation that, hey, you should know what you're doing, but you go, wait a minute. And it's so easy, Alex, for you to just jump on a bandwagon and go to university like your mates because you want to fill yeah. the void. Yeah. But you decided to to not do that there. And what was that like for you? Because, you know, obviously you were, you had this vision of being a pilot and that means you had to go to, you know, either Massey University or a, or a um, private training organization. Yeah. What, when you when you decided at that point in time to go, actually, I'm just going to take it easy. What is that like for you and your parents who obviously were like, told you so maybe? Um, what, are the, what do they think? Yeah. About that? Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, we, we went down both paths. We, yeah, me and dad went up to the Massey University Open Day and went and had a look there. And we also had a look at the, the, the flight school in Christchurch. Because um, yeah, I was going to, I was definitely going to pursue it, um, even though, yeah, in hindsight, I wasn't really sure if that's what I wanted to do. I was going to go after it. Um, but yeah, once I made the decision not to go to university or not go to flight school straight away after high school, um, it was, it, it definitely was weird, um, especially for me. Like I was at St. Andrews College in Christchurch. So that's a, that's a private school. So I guess there's a bit of a a, a slight stigma that once you, well, you're kind of expected to know what you're doing as soon as you finish. Like you've, you've been given that guidance to to kind of know what you want to do straight away. So for me, not knowing, I was definitely out of the ordinary. Like at least, yeah, for me, most of my mates, if not all of my mates, at least had a degree that they wanted to go, to go and do. So I definitely was the odd one out who didn't jump straight into a degree or into some sort of tertiary education. So it definitely was weird both for me and mum and dad. Um, Thankfully, they gave their full support. They just wanted me to be happy doing what I want to be doing. Um, and yeah, for the first couple of years out of high school, that was working full time and kind of finding my feet as a, a new a new adult, I guess. Um, so yeah, very thankful for them having their full support and me to to figure out what I wanted to do. But yeah, it definitely was weird for for the both of us. Yeah, and and I love you said because there's an expectation, you know, when when you go to some schools, there's an expectation that hey, because you go to a certain school, that you are going to university. Like it's just yeah, a, there's no question. Is that right? Cool. Yeah. And and you know, I face up with a lot of people that go to some of these schools that when you say I'm not going to university, it's like what? What are mm. you talking about? Everyone from the school goes to university, so there would have been a big navigation for you and your peers as well. And I yeah. guess, you know, as, as you started being a young adult, as as a new adult, as you use, that's a great terminology right there, a new adult. Um, 
So obviously when you're at school, you you know, you are doing sports, you're being active, but now you are not doing that. And now you're in the working world. And how did you notice yourself? What happened with you and your, I guess, your lifestyle when you started working? Yeah, I guess it changed in the fact that like, I mean, yeah, I, I, the shift I was on, I was working six till 2.30. Um, so immediately I had to become a morning person as again, my parents will vouch for a dad, especially if you go and ask him, was Alex a morning person in high school? He will definitely say that I was not. Um, so I think I've, I've definitely got that to thank from my, my first couple of years working full time. Um, but yeah, in terms of, Play, like playing sport like I still st I still stuck playing sport like I was playing rugby and cricket for school and I just switched that out I was playing club rugby and cricket because I still had the love to play sport so because I know a lot of people stop once yep. they finish high school um, and I didn't want to do that so I just stuck with it and just yeah had a great time playing with the oh, mates beautiful. and yeah having fun oh beautiful and so that was 2018 2019 and Then the joys of 2020 arrive, and let's talk about how that because now this this is the biggest void ever. You know, this is yeah. a this is the void that everyone in the world faced at that time. Yeah. And how did you? What is what is that like for you? Because now you probably couldn't go to work as much as you. Well, I guess maybe you did, but you were doing irrigation a little bit. So, what does that shift for you now? Because um, you were not at school. You, yeah. Yeah. So obviously, yeah, we all we all remember 2020. Like it was a weird time. Um. Both my young brothers, they were at school at the time. So they went from going to school to just being sat around at home. Um, I was still working. I was still at Pack and Save at the time. So I was still going to work every day because yep. we were deemed an essential service. So I was going to work every day. But yeah, I guess the biggest change for my life, at least, came in that 2020 lockdown period, that first bit of the lockdown, um, when I made the decision to start going for a run every day. Um Yeah, playing playing rugby, you kind of, I mean, there is a bit of a there's a bit of a drinking culture around the uh, around the rugby scene, um, and I will admit I did get stuck into that a wee bit when I was uh, when I first um, left school, um, and I, I think I've definitely shown you the photo. We have to pull the photo up, but it took its to. toll as we yeah. as we can remember, um, and yeah, I think I I got it to about 110 kgs. Um, which is a lot heavier than I was when I was in my in my earlier years. Um, I never was that big when I was younger. But, yeah, I got it to 110 kgs. And, yeah, come lockdown, I wanted to – I guess I decided to make a change. Um, I remember the, the turning point, really, I, I was in the gym and I stood on the scales because I didn't really like standing on the scales too much because I knew I was – I knew I was heavier. I knew I was yeah. a bit bigger built. Um, just things like – I remember going to the doctor for a – For like a physical for a, from a diving ticket and even the doctor said oh like yeah your weight's getting up there a wee bit like i remember that pretty vividly um so i didn't really like step on the scales but i thought i'd take a bit of a baseline measure to see what i was at and i was still on the scales and yeah i was about 100 109.7 kgs whatever it was um and yeah had a bit of a turning point um and decided to make a change um because it, it was either going to be make use of the time have some like some yeah make something good of the time or i was just going to sit around and probably put more more weight on so they yeah, decided to just start going for a run every day um i'm not really sure what drove me to running i know mum run mum runs every day so subconsciously that probably had something to do with it but yeah just decided to go for a, for a 5k jog every morning and um I'm not sure how long it took because, yeah, I didn't really take photos. I never really paid too much attention to what I was doing. Like, I was just trying to get yeah. a wee bit healthier. But I was still playing rugby at the time. And once the restrictions lifted and we went back to rugby training, I remember one of the boys said to me, like, where the heck's the rest here? And I, I, I looked at him and I was like, hey? And he's like, where's the rest here? Like, what have you done? And yeah. this was only, I can't remember how, how long a period of time it was, but it wasn't a super long period of time. But It was, an, it was enough for people to be shocked at the, at the at the change that I've made. Yeah, so, I think, yeah, that's, I think, um, I think, I mean, I've seen the photo and it's, as you know, when I, you can't believe it's you, it's pretty, pretty crazy. But I think what I, what I would like to just talk about there was, you know, 
people say why running, but subconsciously your mom was already doing that, that you were in a household yeah. where there was activity now. So, yeah. and I think, you know, it's all about the company that you keep. But before we even go down that day, um, when I was doing my little research on you, Alex, your brothers didn't believe that this would happen. They were like, yeah, okay, cool. This is just a, a one-off thing. Um, you know, they, they yeah, were so like, they, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. They, were, they were skeptical. I mean, everyone was yeah. skeptical. Like, yeah. when I first started going into it, like no one really thought it was going to stick. I mean, me... I didn't think it was going to stick. Like I didn't know how long I was going to be able to keep this up. Like I just thought I'd give it a crack and, and see where we got. But thankfully it stuck. I mean, I'm still going at it today. Yeah. I haven't missed many days since. Um, But yeah, they definitely didn't think it was going to stick. I tried to get them into it as well. And in the first lockdown, they, they got into it a wee bit with me. Um, But yeah, I was the only one who stuck at it for that first lockdown. So yeah, and then and then you know to acknowledge the the work that you did as well, you know. So in the in that first lockdown, within a year, you ran a cup. It wasn't just running; you started taking part in competitions. But when did you actually go? When did you have the conference to go? I'm actually going to start entering competitions because there's running for for health, then there's yeah. running to get involved in you know an activity. Um, because you know the reason I ask that question is because lots of people that might be listening might be self-conscious about the, how fast they are or what they look like. And what is it like for you that you would actually? I'm just going to put my hat in the ring. Yeah. So, what got me into the competitive side of it was um, a thing called Park Run. So our local park run at home is Pegasus, um, and a mate of mine he used to go pretty often, and he said to me like, "Oh, there's a there's a five k run where they time you." Um, and it's every every Saturday morning at eight in the morning. Um, and he said to me, just come back and give it a crack. And I was like, run, we'll give it a, give it a go. Um, and I'd been running for a wee while at this point, because this was, yeah, after lockdown. So I might have been going for four or five months at this point. But yeah, I went along and gave it a good crack. And I came, I, I came second the first time that I went, um, only to be beaten by my, or now coach, um, Mark Reed. Um, and it was a bit shocking at the time because someone came up to me and said, like, do you know how old that guy is who beat you? And I was like, oh, no. He was like, oh, he's like 52, I think he was at the time. Yeah. Um, oh, no, he wasn't 52. He would tell me off for saying that. It was in his 50s, <laughs> early 50s. Um, but, yeah, so that's when I realized that I might actually have some talent behind me. Um, but, yeah, that being said, like, the competitive side of it definitely is a lot more engaging, I find. Um, just being somewhat competitive gives you a reason to get there, out there and train. Like a lot of people have said to me, like, well, like, how, how do you stay motivated? How do you get out there every day and do it? And a big part of what I say to people is find a goal, find something to aim at, find something to target, just find something to like, have a reason to want to get out there and do it every day. Um, but yeah, for me, getting into the competitive side of it definitely was that park run, that the the rush that I felt competing against other people, trying to yeah. better myself against other people. And totally. So you started five k, and then how do you start getting from five k to said ten k, then to a twenty one k, and then to the half Ironman? How, how what? Yeah. What is what is the process for you? Because you know it's the reason I ask is it wasn't it wasn't over a long period. It was basically within twelve months that you started knocking these things off. Yeah, it was it was pretty quick. So. My yeah, my progression definitely was slightly odd. Um, the longest run that I did, I mean, I I ticked up a half marathon pretty early. I think I'd been running for about two weeks before oh. I went out and did a half marathon. Um, and the reason behind that is, I mean, yeah, the three of us, me, and, me, Giles, and Harry, were all very competitive. Um, and Giles, he had no plans on it. He just went out and ran a half marathon. Um, well, not a half marathon. He ran twenty one k. So as, still, as, as you, still as you do, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know how he did it. He doesn't know how he did it, but he went yeah. out there and did it. Um, and that really annoyed me because I wanted to be the first one to do a half marathon. So, I think a few days later, I, I roped Harry in to come and do it with me, and we went and jogged up to North Lobin School and back. So yeah, yeah I think fourteen runs in, I took the half marathon, which I know is slightly odd for a, for a lot of people, but I mean, it kind of shows you like if you want to go and do something. If you just go and give it a crack, then chances are you've you've got the you've got the net to go and do it. Yeah, because and T- Tana's nodding his head right there because Tana, you've you've been doing a bit of running as well, and but it's been a long process for you. 
Yeah, quite a long process. Um, but you, you, I definitely agree with you. It's definitely mind over matter. You know, when I first started, one of the other sub wardens started a run club, and I went and I was, you know, dead last running, just yeah. blowing like no efficiency, no whatever. And then I just kept going back, kept chugging away, and then by you know within three four months, I still wasn't the most efficient runner. But um, yeah, I was planning to do the half marathon and. Since I've run like three of my own, I still want to eventually run a competition one. But yeah, you're definitely right. Like, yeah, a lot of people are like, oh, how do you, you know, how do you do it? How do you do 5K, let alone 10K or 20, 21K? But it's definitely mind over matter, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be the best pace in the world. But yeah, it's just sometimes you just got to keep going. And it's a good, yeah. it's a good challenge and a good individual thing that you can do. You know what I mean? You don't need anything but yourself. And there's yeah. no real excuses of, you know whereas team sports you can blame other people you can blame whatever running there's no real excuse you know what i mean yeah 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 so i mean i, I do have rugby to thank for probably having the, the base fitness to be able to go and do that because i know I, I tell a lot of people that and they're like how have you how did you manage to do that and i'm like yeah i was oh yeah this was me peak peak weight as well so i was 110 kgs and yeah i just went out on a whatever day it was some evening afternoon and we went and smashed out a smashed out a half marathon but yeah i definitely that was uh, i'm glad you brought that up actually the, the team sport this individual aspect of running um that was something that i both found weird and enjoyed because yeah like you said you've got other people to credit and blame for things that go wrong and things that go right and and both rugby and cricket whereas all your success and failure is on you in running, which now I quite enjoy. Like all your, yeah, all, all your success. That's all down to your own hard work. Like no one can take that away from you. Like if you run a half marathon, like you run a half marathon, like you can't say, oh, like they dragged me through, like they got me across the line. Like no, nah, like that's something that you've ticked off, and no one can take away from you, which I find quite cool about running. Yeah, running is is interesting. Um... Yeah, um, the fact that you did it, you did. So I'll tell you, I I did my first half half marathon, and I thought I could. Well, this is before I knew Alex, and I was I did no training for it. I was like, oh, I'll go for a run, I'll do one five k run, I'll be all good for my half marathon. So I think I ran two five k's. Yeah, I, I entered a half marathon, and I was like, oh, this is easy. This is great. What are people complaining about? I ran the first seventeen k's. I was like, oh, what are you guys talking about? And then I got to seventeen k's, and my body just went. Just yeah. stop working. It just stopped working. Yeah. I was like, what is going on here? It just refused. Yeah. And I was like, oh my goodness. And um, I remember that's so distinct because all the people I had taken over were just were just cruising past. I was like, what? yeah. And my body wasn't yeah. moving. And I was like, so that you know, that shows up the power of training. And I remember going to my physio the whatever the next day or two days, and they just launched into me because I did two I'd made two mistakes. Number one, I didn't train properly for it. Yeah. And number two, I I wore shoes that had been broken in as well. I just like yeah. I just bought shoes that the day before. I was like, oh, these these look cool, and yeah, that wasn't that wasn't a good idea. So um, don't don't be like me. Be like be like Alex. Run a few more before you do that. Yeah, um, yeah do at least do at least thirteen runs before you go and smash the half marathon. Exactly. Don't but, don't don't do two five k's exactly. Uh, but no, then you definitely got then. Giles to yeah yeah. No, I've <laughs> yeah. definitely got Giles to thank for that because I'm I'm not sure how long it would have taken for us to get up to that distance. But yeah, yeah. I, still, I still don't know how he managed that when he first started, but. Yeah, I'm glad to think for that. So that's that's crazy. I'm going to shift away from running for just a second because now, yeah. now, you, so let's go back. You you've you've finished up school. You've got the void. You started running. What then inspired you now? Because you're much older. You're not a you, you know you're not a year thirteen student anymore. You're a mm. young adult. What is it like for you to go? Actually, I want to now go and study um, at university because that's a big shift again. You know because you've been away from you've been in the work yeah. a little bit. So yeah. how how did you navigate that? that conversation with yourself and your and your family i guess yeah so i mean it was a massive shift like initially going out of high school i didn't want to i didn't really want to go to university um i didn't like the open-endedness at the end of it that that was slightly off-putting like i wanted to finish my study or finish my training depending on what i was going to do and have something to go into like i wanted that yeah. direct like progression um so to essentially flip that on its head and be like, no, I want to go into something with no set job at the end was, I mean, yeah, like a lot of people did say to me like, oh, what, why, why have you changed your mind? Um, 
and yeah, initially, I mean, I, like I said, like I've always been active. I've always loved my sports. I've been playing rugby since I was five. Like, like I, I've, I've always been around sports. I've always loved it. Um, so yeah, in hindsight, looking back, like, I don't really know why I didn't think of it earlier. Like, I don't know why I didn't think of finding a career and a, and a passion that I've had my entire life. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure where that clicked essentially. Um, but yeah, early on, I wanted to go into physiotherapy. I thought that would be quite cool, like being amongst athletes. Um, and yeah, that, that changed before I went to university. I wanted to be, I, I knew I really wanted to be amongst the team environment. Yeah. From my rugby days, like I really was striving for that. I wanted to be amongst a team. I wanted to be and amongst like a team sport. So that was my primary goal. Um, and then looking into physio, I just thought the chant, well, it's a very niche side of physiotherapy is working for a team. Um, so, and yeah, after the Otago Open Day, we came down and we looked into the exercise and sports science department. And yeah, I just decided that that's the place for me. I can remember I was down here with dad and he, even he said to me, he's like, Alex, that's where you need to be. Well, that's, that's a massive bit of you. So yeah, after, yeah, after the Otago Open Day, after I made the decision to, because yeah, I came down to look at physiotherapy, come down to look at health side. And yeah, after that experience of looking around the spec school, I was like, no, this is the, this is the place for me. This is the group for me. Yeah, and, and there's two pointers there. Point one is um, we all do this in our lives. You know, we we have a passion. We have the passion, but sometimes we don't see that passion as a, as a possible career pathway. And, you know, yeah. sometimes in, in schools, people, like, they focus on their subjects and not on you as a human being. So you're, yeah. like, you're like, you're like Kim, she's like, right, cool, but wait a minute, your passion is this area here. And, you know, you see this so many, I mean, I see this all the time in my role. And for you to just actually go, hey, wait a minute, if I reflect back and go, it was actually a passion that I've always had in my life, but there was no direction for that passion to go. Actually, yeah. this could be a great pathway because, again, we're so often spoon fed with the idea that you have to have a job title when you go and do tertiary mm. because apparently there's debt and all that kind of negative, negative yeah. talk around it, which is pretty crazy. And, you know, um, but that takes a lot. It's crazy because that's the world you live in and the yeah. story you're told. So, um, which is, I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, it's, it's something that everyone that's listening should remember that, hey, their passion might not be the subject that they enjoy. Yeah. And the second thing I want to raise is I saw Tane smiling when you mentioned physiotherapy because I remember Tane, you were also on the same path when I first met you. You had all these things plus you had physiotherapy as well. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think again, it probably comes down to that job title, you know what I mean? Like everyone thinks of the job title and so physiotherapy was put out there. And again, for me, it was just kind of something that was put to me by one of the teachers and I kind of just ran with it because it sounded good. And yeah, you, you felt like you had that path that you could go down. So yeah, it was very interesting to see what it was. But I think also because I think coming from a sports background, you see physiotherapy and you think of sports, you know, people yeah. in sports doing physiotherapy, which yeah. in reality, there's so many other avenues for physiotherapy. And so once I knew that, I realised it just wasn't what I'd always aimed for it to be. But thankfully, yeah. that, you know, before it was, yeah, before I was year three, year four and realised actually, it's quite hard to get into sports physiotherapy. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. And um, what is it like you navigating the fact that you were going to be studying with your brother, essentially, at the same time? Yeah, so, I mean, a lot of people ask me that. Like, ask me that. Like, how did you find Cowan University yeah, with your brother? Um, and, I mean, I thought it was really cool. Like, we actually yeah. randomly managed to get stuck in the same hole together. I don't know how we managed that. Um but that was that was quite cool as well, especially for running. That made running very easy. Um, yeah. But I think it's it's definitely helped in the sense that I've had someone down here with me, especially navigating like early days. Um, but yeah, no, I reckon it's been really cool. Like I've I've had no downsides to being down here studying with him. Like we've become so close studying down here together. So no, it's been really cool. Yeah, and I like I like to talk about that because people are like, oh, we have my brother or my sis, my sibling, and I'm like, that's 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 the bonus right there because you can be navigating the journey, whatever the journey looks like together. Yeah, and I yeah. and I guess for you as well, the fact that you both enjoy running, you've got your running yeah. partner right there, and and yeah. as you said before, if it wasn't for him running the half marathon, you might yeah. not have done the half marathon. So that that's really yeah really quite cool. No, it's and, been cool having a trainer partner right at my door. So that's definitely yeah. been positive. Yeah, very, very cool. I mean, I mean, I've seen all the things that you guys do, which is, you know, I'm 
always impressed with what you and your brother do and um and now your youngest brother as well is is on the scene as well which is which is pretty cool um but was it like for you now as you as you start because now you're studying awesome but you're still being competitive how did you balance Yeah. those two those two worlds while you're still trying to do the best that you can in both of those spaces there Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, again, a lot of people do say to me, like, oh, like, how do you have the time? Um, and yeah, like, like I said to you before, like, I was not a morning person at all. I was about as far from a morning person as you could be. Like, I hated getting up early in the morning. Like, I, lo I loved to sleep in. Like, an alarm wasn't a thing that I used to see it. Um, and yeah, partly, from work and then now like more so running now um i mean yeah my alarm set 6 a.m every morning like we're up getting a getting a run in before the uh well, especially this time of year before the sun comes up so no that's what i credit to be able to fit it all in like i'm just up early doors every day take it off and then we can focus on study and yeah, get get the work done Yeah, and I guess and I guess the frame for that as well is you know, um, this is a very individual sport. I mean running is individual and you have Yeah. you and your coach. Whereas let's just say if you're in a team sport, you'd have other people around you and you know, um this is gonna sound a bit terrible, but you know, most um you know, university like, oh, you're in a rugby team or you're in a XYZ you're in a team and they're more Yeah. more likely to go, all right, cool, go and do your sport. But you're doing your your running and you might go, Hey, I need an extension because I'm gonna run a half marathon this weekend. Yeah. What, what is that like? You know, I mean, I'm not sure if you had to navigate that conversation, but that would be a whole different conversation that you'd be having with them because you've you you've been up to crushes quite a few times. You've been it's not just being in Dunedin; you've been running all over the place. Yeah, no, we've been uh, we've been all over. We've been as far as I mean, we did the Wellington half a couple of months ago, so we went up there for for that. Um, yeah, we've been been all over. Um, the yeah, the university. I mean, I think you, you get special you get special treatment if you're representing the country. I think that's about as close as you get to getting extensions and stuff like that, especially for the individual sport. Um, but yeah, like you said, the team sports. They, I mean, they all train at a set time, and that's another thing about running that I've come to love is the, like the 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 ability to be able to tailor it to how you want to do it. Like I can literally train at any time of the day. Like if the morning, if they if they want to get to sleep in for for some reason, like I can just push it back in the morning or go in the afternoon or. Well, that is something that I definitely have grown to love, just being able to tailor my training to however my day is looking, which is quite cool. And that helps with being able to fit everything in as well. Yeah, um, that's that's really that's true, right? Because you are basically, as I said before, you're the master of your destiny or your fate, whichever way, Yeah, whichever way that yeah. goes. Now you spoke earlier on about your your physical. You noticed a physical transformation, Yeah. but was there a mental transformation as well? Because running is hard. I mean, running you Yeah. it's with you you and your thoughts. That's it. Essentially, Yeah. unless you've listened, even if you have music, your, your thoughts are there. Did you have you noticed a a change in your mindset? Yeah, so, I mean, the fir the biggest one initially was, I guess, my self-esteem. Like, part of wanting to make a change was not liking what I saw in the mirror. Um, and once I made the physical change, like, liking what I saw in the mirror was, was massive for my mental health and self-esteem. Like, being able to, like, actually, yeah, like, enjoy looking at myself with my shirt off. Whereas before... I used to hate taking my shirt off. Like, yeah, I didn't like what I saw. So going from that to, in, in a quite a short space of time, being able to enjoy what I looked, what I saw in the mirror was, yeah, it was massive. Yeah, and I and I guess that that flows onto all different parts of your life as well. You know, I I found that um, well, I find that when you are physically active, um, because being active is hard, Yeah. especially when you do the hard things, right? It flows Yeah. into different parts of your life. You know, whether it's a conversation you have with your with a partner, or whether it's a conversation you have when you're um, in your team, or whether it's your, when the, you've got to do some study and you're like, hey, this is really boring study, but Yeah. when you do that, when you do some physical, when you do the physical hard work, things Yeah. things change for you. Yeah. Like the discipline that's come with it as well has been massive in everything, like outside of running as well. Like, yeah, being a lot more driven has been quite cool. Like, discovering that, like, yeah, if I want to achieve something, like, it's all on me. Like, I can't rely on anyone else to do it for me. Like, all of that has been quite cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that because, you know, you mentioned the word discipline and lots of people say, I'm not motivated 
I was like, you never mind. Life is not about motivation; it's about discipline. And yeah, if you get the discipline, yeah, if you get the discipline sorted. Yeah, motivation just disappears, and um, but that's hard, yeah. right? That's very hard because we fed, we all fed the narrative that you've got to be motivated. Where's your motivation? And da, 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 da. but as you said, you know the big word is discipline. I'm sure. Yeah, that's I'm sure, Alex, you you wake up in the morning and there's frost, and it's raining, and you. Oh, mate! Like I can I can tell you firsthand. Like there's days that I do not want to get out there and run. Like there is yeah. days where it is pouring with rain outside, and especially in the winter in the Eden, like yeah. it really gets above ten degrees in the morning. So. More often than not this time of year, we're running in gloves and beanies. And yeah, there's definitely days where I don't want to get out there and run. But yeah, I guess that's where the, that's where the discipline comes. And yeah, we, um, oh, my, uh, yeah, Nick Bates, who was the um, head of summer college when I was there, um, you know what I used to call it? The rainy days used to call it, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like, sometimes they were like the, like, these are the days where, like, like these are the days where, these are the days that matter. Like these are the days where no one's looking and no one cares if you got out there and run. Like these are the days that matter, which is quite yeah. cool. Well, that's, a, that's something that's stuck with us. Yeah, and that's that's so true. It reminds me of um, uh, a Mike Tyson quote where Mike Tyson says that everyone's got a plan until you get it in the face. You know, yeah. And that's all about motivation and discipline, right? If you're disciplined, yeah. and you have to do that every day. Um, it's all the hard mahi that goes behind behind the scenes before the race actually happens. That yeah. Yeah, which, or actually at any event, you know, even if it's exams, studying for exams, you don't walk into exam and ace an exam if you haven't done any study. You know, yeah. you don't you don't go into a into a group project and and in a company and ace it if you haven't done any research. So um yeah, it's all about that all about that discipline, which is really cool. Yeah. Um and let's talk about your go back to your running and your and your your competition. So since you have started, what are your some of the your proudest achievements? Obviously that first the first one's probably the proudest thing doing that half marathon. Are there any competitions that you're like, hey, this is, wow, I'm really proud of myself. So the big one when you say that was the half Ironman that I did, so the 70.3 Ironman in 2021 in Topol. Um, so that was, I mean, I, I spoke earlier about having a goal and having something to aim for. Um, that's been, well, that's been my mindset basically since the get-go. So I wanted to find something hard that it was going to be hard to achieve. Um, and yeah, I was watching a guy called Nick Bear on YouTube. He'd done a couple of Ironmans before. Um, so yeah, I saw this Ironman thing and I've heard about it before, but I never looked too much into it. Um, and yeah, I saw that, yeah, there's one in New Zealand. Um, and initially I was like, oh, the Ironman's probably a wee bit too much to train for right now. But then I found that they had a, I had a half half distance option, so I was like, "That's definitely doable." I mean, I can I can run a half marathon already, so I got that ticked off. Um, it was a wee bit harder than just a swim and a bike and a long run. Um, I definitely came to find that out, but that was the one that a lot of people said to me, like, "Oh, like you're, you're not gonna be able to do that," and I was like, "Right, I'll, I'll go and show you." Um, so yeah, finishing that was pretty special. Because I mean, especially when it nearly got cancelled, because um, that was around the 2021 when we had more issues with COVID. It got yeah. pumped, uh, bumped back by two weeks, and I was gutted. Like I remember the the time that they postponed it. Um, I was gutted. I was I thought I was wasn't really going to be able to do it um, after all this training. Um, but yeah, thankfully two weeks later, uh, me and Dad drove up up to Topor, and yeah, you know, I checked off this half half iron then. So that's still to this day probably my biggest achievement in, in the whole endurance exercise space just because how hard I had to work for it. So that was pretty special. Um, but yeah, I've had quite a quite a number of pretty cool events that I've done since that. Um, I've probably done maybe 10 or 15 half marathons with the most recent one being in Wellington at the end of, end of June, that was. Um, so that was pretty cool being able to PB in that after about a year of, of working for a PB because I first started dealing with injuries after my, after a couple of years. So got my first proper running injury. So yeah, that was that was a pretty cool one. But yeah, I mean there's been it's been plenty. Um I did manage to get the course record at Pegasus Park Run. So that was something that we aimed for for a wee while. Like from from being that that's the place where I first got my started. Yeah. 
yeah, so that's that's the place that gave me my um kind of that's what I where I caught the competitive buzz, I guess. So yeah, when I got the course record, that that was pretty special because that course record had stood for like four or five years. So being able oh, to say that I was the yeah. fastest person around that course was pretty cool. So yeah, I mean I've yeah I've gained so much from the sport and I've only been doing it for about four years. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I think and I think that's the thing to put into perspective. It's only been four years, and you know, um, most runners start peaking now. You know, you haven't yet got to your peak. If you know, if you think about endurance runners, um, yeah, you know, this is still early days, and you know, we never know what's going to happen in the next few years. You know, they might be. We have no idea what's going to happen, but it's really cool to see that the growth is really, really, really good. And um, I'm just going to touch on something that you mentioned that you know, the um, doing the half Ironman is is hard. You know, have you heard yeah. of the the Japanese term a misogy? I've not. No. Yeah. So I will talk about misogy. So misogy is something that the Japanese have coined a long time ago. And basically they just say a misogy is every year or every month or what every month, every year, challenge yourself to do something that is so physically hard that um it takes you to the next level, right? So misogy. Yeah. So and the only rule for the misogy is that you don't die. That's it. That's the only yeah. that's the only rule for misogy, right? And you know, when you think about what you've done there, that is a misogy. And I and one of the things that I have implemented in my life is every year I try and do a misogy, like whatever yeah. it is. And I think um, because it goes back to, I think Tana, you do this all the time, but you don't know that you do it, um, is that you, when you do something physically hard, you have to, <clears throat> it's when you do something physically hard, it is challenging in all aspects, but it's this, like you both said, it's about the mind, you know, because mm. doing the movements, yep, you can, you'll get injured or whatever, but just to get to that stage is really hard. So, you know, I would advocate people doing a misogy, but also being safe while they do a misogy. Don't just yeah. do, something, do something silly and yeah, you know, because that that and then don't say we heard in the podcast because yeah, no, don't we have this disclaimer they don't do that there, guys. But yeah, yeah, have a look at a misogy and see what that's all about. Yeah. Um, which is yeah, really cool. Oh, I, you know, when I'm in my coaching world, I learn about all these different crazy things here, yeah, but it's it all comes down to mindset. It all yeah. comes down to mindset, which is um, what we do every single day. Yeah. And Alex, I guess now what's what's the plan for you now? So um, you're heading towards the end of your, you know, this is pretty cool. Your years have just flown by. And, um, you know, from wanting to be a pilot now to getting involved in sports really actively to, to where at the moment, what do you see? I know I never ask about in the next five years or 10 years because we have an idea. Yeah. What's, what's the next What's the next step for you as the year, the, the three-year degree void will come into place in a few months' time? Yes, I mean, it is crazy how fast the time has gone. Like, I mean, it feels like not long ago that we were moving into Salmon the first year. Yeah. So um, I luckily found an aim pretty early on. I had an interest in performance analysis within within the sports sector. Um, so next year I'm going into the, well, hopefully, um, go into the, performance analysis postgraduate program at the at the polytech um yeah to, to further my studies there and then hope to jump into the performance analysis sector of the sports industry yeah and and uh, it's a great reflection point for me as well because the first time you got in touch with me i don't know who you were because yeah i knew, I knew, I knew giles and then you were like yeah and brother said and i was like yeah, just my, my brain was like, how is this? I didn't, I could not compute. I was like, I yeah. just met your brother. What are you talking about? And um, yeah, yeah, that was that was pretty crazy. But you know, the journey's been pretty cool, and seeing you, yeah, some of the things that you've done has been really awesome. And, you know, fingers crossed, you get into that that space there, and then and then yeah. grow, grow from there. Um, Tony, do you have any questions before I keep asking? I've got another. Yeah, I think the only thing I was going to ask is, is there anything you miss in the team sport environment? You know, you've made this huge transition into running and doing a lot of it on your own or even with your brother, which is still, you know, working together, but not. Is there anything you miss from the team, you know, whether it's rugby, cricket, anything you miss from that aspect now that you've moved or shifted into more of a running focus? Yeah, so making the decision to stop playing rugby was a tough one. Because I mean, like I already said, like I love playing rugby, and not just for the sport, for the for the social aspect of it as well. So that was a shock to the system, like not going to rugby training, not having footy on a Saturday with your mates. So just not being in that environment anymore was a shock. Um, and I mean, I still miss it. Like when I go down and watch 
watch the boys play when I'm up at home. Like I still, mm. yeah, like I still miss it to this day. Um, but yeah, with that being said, like I hopefully like I aim to be in the in the rugby side of performance analysis. So I've been pretty lucky to I've been interning with the Otago NPC team uh, the last couple of seasons. So that helped me really cement that I wanted to go into performance analysis, especially for rugby, because um, it allows me to still be surrounded by by the game that I've loved since I was five years old. So that's quite cool for that aspect. But yeah, there is definitely things about rugby and cricket that I miss, mainly the social aspect. Luckily, I mean, a lot of people do think that running is such a, like a lonely sport, like such an individual sport, but it doesn't have to be. Like, we've got a massive group of people that we run down with down here with every week. So that makes it a lot cooler, like running with people. And there's so many good people in this sport. Like once you get into groups and find the people who are keen to train with other people, like it makes it a lot less lonely, which is quite cool. Yeah. And I guess we've seen a great um, upsurge now of running clubs all around the place. You know, there's running clubs yeah. ev everywhere. Yeah. Which is, quite which is quite cool yeah it's yeah. really cool it's such a cool sport to get involved in and it's so easy to get involved in uh get get involved in as well so now seeing all the run clubs is quite cool yeah it is it is pretty cool and um what is it like for you when you got into tv like you know you're yeah that would have been that would have been a what what is going on here that was a pretty that was a pretty cool experience so that came about via the sports shop up at home. So they sponsored me. They were just, yeah, helping me out with a bit of running kit um, and kind of in return, I was doing some kind of some updates for them on their social media page, um, just kind of letting people know what was going on with my training and all that. Um, and I put out a wee introduction post on their page, just letting people know who I was and what I was doing and why they were going to start hearing about this fellow who was doing some running um and a friend of mine whose mum's a reporter on seven sharp she saw the post and sent it to her mum and her mum called me and i just got this phone call one afternoon like hey it's jendy from seven sharp and i was like what the what the heck like what are you doing calling me um and she said hey we we saw the post on the sports shop um, Facebook page and we thought there's a pretty cool story behind that do you want to do you want to tell me the story I was like yes sweet as so I gave her the rundown she was like it's a pretty cool story um, I'll run it past my bosses and I'll get back to you tomorrow I was like right out and then yeah tomorrow I rolled around she called me she's like right we got the uh, got the go ahead do you want to do you want to shoot on Friday and I was like sweet as so in, in, the, in the span of a couple of days I was going to be on Seven Sharp. I remember I called mum and I was like, hey, uh, Seven Sharp, I'm going to come and shoot on Friday. She was like, hey, like with you? And I was like, yeah, with me. So yeah, I was just grinning from ear to ear. I was pretty excited. Um, and it was pretty cool to give Giles and Harry the call when they were at school. And I said to them, hey, do you want to be in the shoot as well? They want to want to hear from you two. Um, so that was pretty exciting. But yeah, that was such a cool experience. Like having that to look back on, like having kind of my journey documented on tv was pretty special so that was really cool yeah it is it is, it is very very cool and it's also quite it's quite a testament to the to the what's what's happening as well but again you know yeah. you it's it's not this is what i'd like to share with that it's there's lots of people out there that are doing the stuff here behind the scenes and you know and just one post you put up the post and somebody came to you and these people out there yeah. that don't put anything up so a shout out to everyone that's doing that there as well it's just grinding away and doing the thing which is, which yeah. is really cool yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you a, a a different kind of question, Alex. Yeah. Let's just say, if somebody wants to start off running, yeah, what would the bare minimum gear you reckon they get? Because I can't just go like what I did. I just bought cool shoes that look really cool. I think those look pretty cool. Yeah. I'm gonna buy them. So if I was gonna say, hey, Alex, what would I need to be to be a safe runner? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, all you need is a decent pair of shoes. So if you go down to a local running shop and just say to them, hey. I'm getting into running. I know no, I know nothing about sports shoes. I know nothing about running shoes. Can you help me? Most places will be able to help you with the basics. I know some shops are better than others. Some shops have more tech and more knowledge than others. Um, but yeah, 
that's basically it. Like, if you just go and get a decent pair of shoes that are going to support you and not hurt your feet, you'll be fine. And I know you can get into, I mean, I've got too many pairs to count, too many pairs of shoes now. But, I mean, yeah, if you've got one decent pair of running shoes, that's all you need. You can get out the door and get started, which is quite cool. And I think I think that's that's the key thing, right? It's just a, a decent pair of shoes and not shoes that look cool. I mean, they could look cool and be decent, but make sure they are Yeah. decent before before they look cool. Yeah, hundred percent. Like, make sure they work for you. Make for your, make sure you work for your kind of foot. Yeah. Definitely. And Yeah. yeah, awesome, um, Alex. We've been speaking for almost an hour. I mean, this hour has just flown by really, really fast. Um, a testament to how easy the conversation has been. But also, I wanted to ask you. A question that we ask all our guests. Our podcast is uh, is called the Baskets of Knowledge, and every week we sh ask our guests to share a piece of knowledge to put into our basket. Um, so we invite you to share a piece of knowledge to put into our basket, and this can be from any part of your life. It could be from the fact when you from jumping from school to the void, from your running, from your study, whatever you you think would be, yeah, piece of knowledge. Yeah, so yeah, I think I will make it around that kind of void because I know a lot of people have a lot of trouble around that. Like I know, I've, I've heard a lot of people who they're at university because they didn't know what they wanted to do. Um, and it's a wee bit disheartening when I hear that almost because a lot of people kind of fall into that trap of having like the pressure of knowing what they wanted to do, but they don't know what they want to do. So they just jump into university straight away. So I think if I could pass on some advice or some knowledge onto some people, I'd say just take your time. Like you've got a lot of time. Like, I mean, yeah, I'm 23 now. And I mean, it doesn't feel like I'm too old to be here or anything. Um, so yeah, I think if I could pass on anything, I'd just say, take your time, figure out what you want to do. Like don't rush into anything because when you rush, that's when you can, yeah, just make a mistake and get into something you don't actually want to do. So yeah, just take your time. figure out what you actually want to want to do because it'll pay off in the end. Yeah, that's that's true, right? There's no rush, and also, you know, if we if we, it's a bit like if you, if you're running, if you start rushing when you're running, you're gonna make a mistake, you're gonna get injured, right? Yeah. So same thing in Yeah. life, if you're rushing, you're gonna make a rash decision, Yeah. and yes, to be the life you can you can recourse if you want to, but if at the start you you know you you take a breather and go, it's okay for me to just chill for a bit, but you also find what you really want to do. Yeah. That's that's what happens, right? And hundred percent you know, like. Because you do have that time there. And yeah. there's people all around you that will be able to help you figure out what you actually want to want to do. And, yeah, I mean, that's what I credit to finding my passion, which is quite cool. So, yeah, I mean, that would be my bit of advice that I'd pass on to people. Yeah, and I think that that can be taken in any context in, in life, 100%, you know, yeah. which is, yeah. I mean, yeah, you can use that with training, with finding a new job, going into further study. You can, yeah, you can take it with take it anywhere. That's right. Yes, beautiful. Tony, any last, any last words from you, Tony? Uh, just I guess for Alex, just good luck with the yeah for the last I guess six months in your specs degree and then going into hopefully performance analysis. It sounds like it'll be an exciting yeah next couple of years for you. Yeah, thank you very much. Now, any any last words, Alex, from you that we didn't cover that you thought you would wanted to share with us? Because you know you know your story. We just know Yeah. the little bits that we can that we can Yeah. figure out. You No, know. I think we've yeah, we've we've covered it in pretty in pretty good detail. It's been quite cool to be able to be able to tell it and share it because you know, I might be a bit biased, but I think it is quite a cool story. I like to think it is somewhat inspiring. I mean, yeah, like a lot of people have said to me, like, oh, like you've like you you've become so good and I'm like, well, I mean it didn't I mean it like it's not always been there. Like it's taken work and I mean if I can do it, like if I can come from hundred and ten kgs, like a front row footy player, I used to love a beer. So now Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm hopefully gonna break fifteen minutes from five K this season. So I mean if I can do that in four years, then I mean anyone can do it. So Yeah. yeah, like just go and give it a crack and yeah. That's very true. However, before we end, before we end, you've just raised something to me. We've spoken about how awesome it is. But what about the challenges? When what about those hard days? What do those hard hard days look like? You know, so apart from the the weather and stuff. Were there times when you're like, actually, what am I doing here? Like, this is both academically and also in the running, because there's two different things there. Because not everything is hunk not everything is hunky dory, right? The life goes like 100%, yeah. this, yeah. No. Yeah, I mean, yeah, both study and running. Like, there are days where I'm like, why, why am I doing this to myself? Um, 
but that's where I guess having that end goal or at least having a goal to work towards is is massive. Because I mean, if you've got that thing that you're targeting, I mean, that's that's your why at least for the time being. So yeah, like when times get tough and when you do want to throw in the towel, you've got that to look at and be like, well, I mean, that's why I'm doing it to myself. Well, that's why I'm working this hard. Like, that's what that's why I'm pushing. So it will all be worth it, hopefully. So yeah. And I, I like that because you know I think what's you've 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 mentioned a few times in this conversation that um you've you've got to have a goal and yeah. sometimes those goals can just be you know a goal for tomorrow or a goal for the next week or, yeah but also what you as you said you know you had a goal to be in an event and the minute you yeah. do that there that puts some accountability for you um, yeah straight away especially if you've, got, if you've got to pay money when you start paying when you start dropping some money you go right cool now I'm paying money this becomes really yeah. real yeah. yeah I mean yeah that that Iron Man cost a fair bit like i think i spent like five grand on a bike for an event that i was wasn't even sure i was gonna be able to complete so i mean that came a lot of skepticism but like once you start investing in yourself like i mean yeah you're, you're holding yourself accountable um but yeah i mean it, that paid off and i can yeah I, I can be testament to it all it all does pay off like it was all money well spent so yeah yeah beautiful well done alex you know um like I said at the start, it's been a real privilege getting to know you over the last few years and seeing your story. And your story is pretty inspirational. It's inspirational for a couple of reasons. Number one, that you took the gap to go and think about what you want to do. It's inspirational for the fact that you went to university as an as a as a new adult. I like that word, new adult. That's so great. I'm going to steal that there, new adult. Because um, everyone says young adult, but actually new adult is actually quite good. And also the fact that you went from someone who um, enjoyed the social side of sports and is now doing a sport that's in a physical transformation, but also a mental transformation. Summation. So, really inspirational, but also in the time frame that you've done it, that's that's the key thing as well. Yeah. Um. So beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Um. Thank you for jumping on today. You know. Um, no, thank you very much for having me. It's been great. With, no worries. And for our listeners out there, hopefully you have enjoyed listening to Alex's story. If you haven't learned something today, please go back and listen because you have not been listening to this very carefully. There's lots of lots of gems here. Um. Our listeners, the regular listeners, thank you for jumping on again. Please feel free to share, comment, and like this um, podcast because only by sharing can we grow. And until next time, don't forget to keep smiling, don't forget to be happy, and don't forget to put something into your basket of knowledge. Until, until next time, bye everybody. Kakite. Thank you for listening to Baskets of Knowledge. Yeah, we hope that you found something useful to put into your basket of knowledge. And as we said before, Remember to put something little into your baskets of knowledge every week. And as always, feel free to like, comment, and share this podcast. Thanks, everybody. Bye.